Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and today I want to talk about Texas rigged soft plastics and five big mistakes that I see a lot of anglers make with the simple Texas rig. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. The Texas rig is probably that lure that most of us start out fishing. It's probably the first thing that we were taught by either our dad or someone else. And the best thing about a Texas rig is it literally doesn't matter where you go in the nation, no matter what fishery, you could be fishing a pond, you could fish a lake, you could fish a river, you could be fishing for smallmouth bass, spotted bass, largemouth bass. A Texas rig is a great option to catch fish. And another great thing about it is it really catches fish in all conditions. Yeah, there might be certain conditions where a Texas rig is maybe favored a little bit more and maybe other lures work better in other conditions, but it just seems like fish never get used to a Texas rig. So today I just wanna talk about five mistakes that I see a lot of guys make with the Texas rig. If you are new to bass fishing, a Texas rig consists of a weight, a hook, sometimes a bobber stop, and your favorite soft plastic bait. This bait can be a plastic worm, it can be a creature style bait, it can be a crawl style bait, it can really be anything in between. Mistake number one that I see a lot of guys make with a Texas rig actually involves the rigging of the worm. Now, one thing that I see a lot of guys do, especially when they are fishing a big worm. You know, for instance, I have a 10 and a half inch Zoom old monster worm right here. Here's the thing that a lot of guys do. When they rig up a really big worm like this, they think because you have a very big worm that you need to take this hook and put it further down the worm. So what I see a lot of guys do is they'll they'll put this hook and they won't pop it out until they get maybe an inch or even further down the worm. What ends up happening is they have a worm that is rigged like this. You have almost an inch above the eye of that hook that's just soft plastic. I can see why guys might want to do this because they think this is a big worm. I want to try to get that hook down there far enough so that that fish can get the bait. But guys, what ends up happening, you end up going through a lot of worms rigging it this way because almost all the time you set the hook on that first fish and what's gonna happen is that hook is going to rip up that worm a quarter inch, a half inch, and then all of a sudden that worm is, is pretty much done. You've already wasted that inch, inch and a half worm on top and sure you can probably bite off the top of that and, and re-rig it, but now you have a little bit shorter of a worm. And here's the other thing, is I've never seen this to really impact my hookup ratio. If you've ever watched a fish actually eat a big worm underwater, which you can search on YouTube, and there's plenty of this on YouTube, typically, a bass is almost going to inhale the entire worm, even if it's a 10 and a half inch worm all at once. Now, if they don't inhale it the first time, what you see a lot is they'll pick up the tail on the first kind of like bite, and then the next inhale, they get the whole thing. So there's no need to put that hook way far down in that worm because that fish is getting the whole bait every single time. So instead of putting that hook further down the worm, really I just like to wait a few seconds before I set the hook, let that fish get that bait and start swimming off with it. The other thing about having a hook very far down in your worm is sometimes that top part can really kink and that's gonna really twist your worm, which is going to really twist your line. And if you have a bunch of twisted fluorocarbon line, it's not gonna be a fun day out there fishing. So when you rig up your worm, simply just go in about a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch. That's all you need to do. I pretty much just barely cover the eye of that hook. That fish is gonna have no problem getting that hook. You're gonna have a great hookup ratio. And also I found that when you rig it this way, the actual little top part, this quarter inch, three eighths of an inch of plastic on top doesn't even rip that often. And even if it does, you can bite down a quarter inch off and you still have a really healthy 10 and a quarter inch long worm. When it comes to mistake number two, I really wanna look at your hook because there's a lot of different hook options for a Texas rig, but let's talk a little bit about your hook. There's a lot of different styles that you can use for a Texas rig. You can use a straight shank hook, you can use an offset worm hook, you can use an EWG style hook. There's a lot of different hooks. If you use a hook 
and you're comfortable with it and you have a great hookup ratio and you have a great land ratio, then don't change what you are doing. If it's working for you, then stick with what you're doing. Everybody is a little bit different. Everybody has a little bit different hook set. A lot of people tend to use a little bit different equipment. So if it's working for you, then just stick with that. I really like to use an offset worm hook anytime I'm fishing a worm style bait. So maybe that's a bigger ribbon tail worm or a small ribbon tail or a straight tail worm. Now the other hook that I like to use a lot is a straight shank. Typically I'm going to use a straight shank with my creature style baits, whether that's a beaver style bait maybe it's a chigger crawl style bait those are the two hooks that i like to use i've actually kind of started to get away from using an ewg style hook for the most part unless it's in some very thick soft plastics now the mistake that i see a lot of guys make with their hook is really not taking in consideration the gauge the heaviness of the wire of their hook when it comes to the gauge of the hook this is what i'm going to recommend the further away that bass is if you're making really really long cast the little bit smaller gauge hook the little bit thinner wire you probably one. Now, if you're fishing really close range and you're flipping and pitching, you can really get away with a little bit heavier wire hook in that case because you're so close to that fish. If you're making really long casts, sometimes going down to a little bit thinner wire is going to help drastically with you hooking up with fish. I was fishing a tournament in Florida several years back and I was actually using a thicker gauge hook and really making some long casts fishing some hydrilla lines out in deep water. And what I found out is I was missing and losing fish often with kind of that thicker gauge wire hook that I typically use when I'm fishing very close. So I stepped down in the thickness of that wire and it really made a big difference in hooking up with fish. No matter if you're using fluorocarbon or monofilament, on a long cast, there's going to be a lot of stretch in that line. And you typically need to get a hook through some soft plastic and into a fish past the barb. And you would be surprised at the pressure that that actually takes at a very long distance. So stepping down to that thinner wire is going to allow that hook to penetrate a little bit better. Probably my favorite hook now for very long distance casting a Texas rig, like a Texas rig worm, is this Hayabusa round bend offset worm hook. Typically I'm using a 4 aught 5 aught or 6 aught depending on the soft plastic that I'm using. It's a thinner wire hook, but it's a very strong hook. I don't have to worry about bending this hook out on a hook set and I have no problem. Mistake number three, and I think that this is one of the most important things that guys overlook is the fall rate of your Texas rig. How fast that lure is falling. Sometimes a very fast fall rate can trigger bass and sometimes a very slow fall rate can trigger bass. A lot of us bass fishermen like to use kind of the same weights. You listen to guys talk Talk about it on YouTube and they're all saying a lot of the same weights. You hear a ton of quarter ounce size and a ton of three eighths ounce and a ton of half ounce. That seems to be where a lot of bass fishermen live in that quarter ounce to half ounce range. You're, you're going to catch bass on those sizes, but sometimes having a little bit slower fall rate, maybe stepping it down to an eighth ounce size can really trigger bites, especially if you're fishing shallow water and especially if you're fishing in cold water conditions. The same thing can happen sometimes stepping up to a little bit heavier weight. Maybe this is a three quarter ounce size or even one ounce at times. Now a lot of times I like to do this in the summer and I also like to do this on clean bodies of water. Sometimes it seems like if a fish gets too good of a look at a bait in clean water they won't bite it but if it zooms past their face sometimes that triggers them to bite. Now obviously weight size is going to dictate a lot when it comes to the fall rate but another thing that can really dictate your fall rate is also the style of plastic that you're using. If you're using a soft plastic bait like a straight tailed worm or a beaver there's really no flap in those lures so they're going to fall fairly fast even on a smaller rate because there's nothing catching the water. Now, a crawl style bait, as it falls, the, those legs are gonna flap and that's going to slow 
that bait as it falls down. Soft plastics that are very bulky, not only having a lot of flaps, but just bigger in general, that's also something that's gonna slow down that fall rate. So make sure you're always thinking about the fall rate and whether you need a little bit slower fall rate or a faster fall rate in order to catch back. So mistake number four when it comes to a Texas rig actually involves sound. Sound is very important to a fish underwater. If you're fishing very loud conditions, sometimes it is best to actually add a little bit of sound to your Texas rig. And when I say loud conditions, there's a number of things that can be a what I would consider a loud condition. For instance, if you're fishing a very windy situation, you know, where you have a lot of chop on the water, sometimes adding a little bit of sound to your Texas rig will actually help improve you getting bites. Another thing that can be a noisy situation is if you have a lot of muddy water. If you're fishing very heavily stained water, adding a little bit of noise, adding a little bit of rattle, to your Texas rig can help you to get more bites. Sometimes all you have to do in order to add a little bit of sound is put a bead right behind the weight. If you have a bead behind that weight, that weight is gonna sit there and clink on that bead and it actually makes a little bit more noise than you might actually think underwater. It's just enough to really get a bass's attention, help them hone in on your bait and find it in those noisy conditions. All right guys, the last mistake that I see a lot of guys make with a Texas rig is everybody kind of assumes when you fish a Texas rig to always peg the weight. I see a lot of guys simply use a, a, a toothpick or a bobber stopper on top of the weight. And yes, there's definitely times when you do wanna do that. If you're fishing, you know, some heavier grass situations or you're fishing around a little bit sloppy conditions. If I'm fishing around really small branchy wood, you know, wood that's literally under an inch in size, that's a time that I do like to use a pegged weight. But what I have found is that I think it's really best to just not peg your weight in general. I think that you get more bites by not pegging your weight. It kind of makes that bait when it's on the bottom look really natural down there. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna know what I think is probably the most versatile Texas rig on the planet, you can click the link on this video right here Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video.